First project is going to be some boxes outside the trailer. This is, uh, just get this some checker plate from Princess Auto. And I cut it with a triple chip blade and score it just about halfway through on my crosscut sled to make sure all those are really straight and it bends nice and sharp. I'll be bending it on just a small little break that I'm going to uh, rig up right now. So I'm uh, making a couple of boxes for the outside of the trailer and uh, I'm making them with this checker plate aluminum. It's too thin to weld so I'm re rekindling my old skill of riveting from aircraft mechanics. I had to pick up a couple of tools. Do these little clicos for holding things in place and a, uh, just a head, head for the air gun. And these are much bigger rivets than I'm used to using. But uh, it's the same old thing. And it's, you don't have to be as fussy with a battery box as you have to do with an airplane. So a little easier. So time for an update. Here's one box uh, almost done. This is going to be the battery box that holds those two golf cart batteries. There's one down there that's not, uh, not it's going to be something else, but this one is still, uh, doesn't have any reinforcement, it's still quite flimsy. Uh, but this one has been reinforced and kind of finished up. It's got a butterfly kit on the side. Opens up. And the latch. There's the top of the latch riveted in there. Goes with that. I'm still uh, just riveting in some things to just hold the batteries in there. Just some racking, I guess, to hold the batteries in. But this is a good demonstration of how you rivet things together. Just a piece of, uh, this piece of angle in there that's going to hold the battery on one side. And uh, these little brass things in there are called, uh, called Clecos. And they, once you drill a hole through, you put the Cleco in. You can put it in there. Pulls Pleco out. Pleco out. And uh, they hold it all in place while you drill it together. And then you take it all apart, clean up all the holes, deeper all the holes, put it back together with the Clecos, and then one at a time pull the Cleco out and replace it with a rivet. So these are the rivets that are going in. So this stuff is all put together with rivets. There's no screws or welding or anything. It's all riveted together. Here's the plate welded on for the new power jack. It's moving back a little bit because the tailgate won't open. I'm almost ready to put these boxes on the side. That's for the battery box. I just got those little wings are just for holding down the batteries. We'll probably see more of that later. That's the uh, battery hold it on top. Okay, so it's time for trailer update. Uh, exterior wise, I've, I've uh, just taken all the uh, all the advertising stickers and stuff off so it's nice and clean. I have uh, welded on a, a mount for the new power jack. This one will be removed uh, because the tailgate of the truck hits it when it opens up and I want to keep the space between the truck and the trailer minimum for the best uh, gas mileage. Uh, I made these two boxes I made. Oh, that's bright. This one's just uh, empty. It's going to be utility. I'll probably have the uh, fuel tank for the diesel heater in there. And uh, I don't know, ex external sort of uh, equipment. And mount it up on there. They've got a little rubber little rubber bumper so they don't in case it bumps into the in case it bumps into the uh, red trailer. This side over here has the batteries in it. So there's batteries. That's uh, basically two that's 230 amp hours of power. So lots of power. Uh, nice and safe. I also just wanted to point out that I've uh, fastened some uh, sheets of uh, that's polyethylene, like cutting board material, pretty thick and heavy. 
and non-conductive so uh, anything get any impact if anything drives down the top of this any sort of I don't know, crash or anything that falls on that if that ever gets punched down it won't uh, it won't short out the batteries also this uh, steel frame here is bolted right down through with some threaded rod right down to the uh, steel supports that are welded under the frame so these batteries are locked into that frame pretty tight pretty pretty comfortable with that yeah, there's some good uh, clips on the side this has all been I won't go underneath there but there's uh, overkill uh, steel welded underneath there to support these things over engineered for sure so now I'm going inside and uh, here's the uh, here's the uh, fridge and it's going to go up against the far end and it's time to start working in here so the first step is to uh, just stripping off a lot of trim and all this all this junk and stuff from the inside exposing a lot but just getting down to these bare walls uh, this is a typical of the fit and finish of these things you know one thing's overdriven one's underdriven I'll have to go either belt sand those down flush or drive them in better so that I can put a proper finish whatever I'm going to write my wall treatment the insulation in here I paid uh, I think $700 or $900 to have this thing insulated but uh, you know you can see it's just it's just a little chunk of, a couple of chunks of styrofoam stuck in between the members and all this all this steel just conducts a, is a thermal conductor right from the outside to the inside so I don't really know how much good that styrofoam is doing in there I considered putting in putting some foam in there as well and filling in all the gaps with foam but you know I think I'm just gonna leave it because I mean I don't have any any intention for this thing to be used in the winter uh, okay, so I'm going to put a floor down here today, and uh, there's the there's the underlay, and the floor is leaning up against that. Uh, some of the prep things you got to do here: all the screws are in kind of crooked on the floor. These are all sticking up a little bit. They'll probably just belt sand those off flush. Um, all the ones on the walls, I'd say I've got to redo about 90% of them. Like this is sticking out, and. Uh, if I turn that up, if I try to drive it in further, it'll just spin. So I have to drill a proper size hole on the side, take it out and put it in so it pulls itself in flush. Here's an example where I've, I've done that. Drill the hole. This one is actually flush. This is the weirdest cabinet making I have ever done. So I just finished the front frame, face frame for the front of the bed. And I thought, well, maybe I might as well just make them out of the aluminum that I was going to make for the support members out of. Next thing I know, I'm making a face frame of a cabinet out of aluminum that's all riveted together. And uh, I said, <clears throat> my thinking is that, you know, it wasn't just great to make those boxes outside, but um, that course I took on aircraft maintenance was basically how to rivet aircraft together. And uh, the reason why they rivet aircraft together is because it can stay together. Because once you've cold fused these pieces of metal together, they're not, it's basically a one continuous piece of metal now. So it can really take a lot of, a lot of abuse. This trailer is going to experience a lot of the same crazy distortions that an aircraft might go through maybe even worse so uh, so what better way to put together all the stuff than the way they do an aircraft so i'm actually considering maybe making all of the frame for framework for this cabinet to just be framed out of just small pieces of aluminum 
just out of make a web out of it and then just and then set the uh, set the uh, drawer slides onto that so not have any cable or gables not have any uh, cabinet gables in there at all anyway I've rethought the heater out uh, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna put it there there's there's a lot of good reasons to put it over here uh, but uh, putting it over here just to, to create a, a defined space for it because there'll be small drawers in here above a couple of small drawers above that and then down here there'll just be a plate or something decorative to for that heater to exhaust out, out through so I, uh, I'm using an old ladder about it was left by the people who had the house before us it had been sitting on top of the shed roof for maybe 50 60 years <laughs> anyway um, it was really covered in lichen and moss and stuff going it took me a long time to clean it up but that thing is locked in there that is so solid it's unbelievable how solid that is so two pieces of that and a little more and a little more aluminum and that'll be great things are going well just taking this piece of channel stock and cut some notches in it I'm going to try to bend that into a frame for the access panel. Hopefully my measurements are right. I'm going to find out. So I had a couple of requests for some for a trailer update. Haven't done much more lately. I've been busy with other stuff, but uh, there's the platform for the bed done. The plywood's on it is definitely not done. There's going to be a carpet on top of this, and this front section, a section is going to be cut out of that. That goes, you can kind of see a frame underneath there, but there's a whole section that that lifts up so that you can get access to uh, water tanks and all the services underneath here. Uh, around the back here. Uh, I've welded some steel in here. This is just a support for the bed. So, and this, of course, defines the top of the garage. Those, uh, just picked up those stones for something else and then this one by one steel square tubing here is going to be where the these are going to be two big screens two big screens so and then uh, this will be solid here so of course pillows and heads are back here but when you open this up giant screen so lots of air coming through between that and the door there I'll probably make some sort of screen door some sort of phantom screen I can pull across there Lots of ventilation.